we had a chance this week to see and use the brand new Corsair Xenion Flex OLED monitor and a chance also to speak to the product team about this exciting new screen. We've got all the latest specs, information, and our initial hands-on impressions. And if you stick around to the end, we'll even show you just how good the motion clarity is on this screen. At the end of August, Corsair announced their Xenion Flex 45 WQHD 240 OLED monitor. It's a 45 inch ultra wide OLED screen and get this, it's bendable. Let's run down the specs quickly first. The panel is 45 inches in size and has got a 21 by nine ultra wide aspect ratio. It's got a 3440 by 1440 resolution, which initially I was a bit concerned about actually on such a large screen, as this is normally the resolution that you'd see on a 34 inch or a 35 inch ultra wide. But actually using the screen, it really wasn't much of a problem. Tech size was still sensible and comfortable, I felt, for up close office and text work. And it's of a very similar size to what you get on something like a 27 inch 1080p display. You know, that is quite large, but it's certainly usable. It won't offer the same pixel density as a smaller screen, but for gaming and multimedia, especially if you're going to move slightly further away from the screen, you completely forget about it. And I think the image looked very good. It's using an OLED panel from LG Display with their familiar RGBW pixel structure and it offers the usual benefits of this technology like the true blacks, a super high contrast ratio, a basically infinite contrast ratio and the ability to turn off individual pixels for HDR and per pixel dimming. Corsair advertise a 1.35 million to one contrast ratio spec and a peak brightness of a thousand nits. We found out from Corsair at the event that the 1000 nits HDR peak brightness is applicable for a 3% APL. The brightness of the screen is going to, of course, vary depending on how much of the screen is bright. Um, that's normal on all OLED screens, so we'll put some of the other expected peak brightness levels here. Um, the key one here being that at a 100% full white screen APL, the, um, the Xenion Flex is expected to reach 150 nits. Now this is still being finalized, but this is the current spec that Corsair are talking about, which would mean that for general usage, office applications and everything like that, you should be able to use the screen comfortably at 120 nits or 150 nits uh, without the OLED ABL ever needing to be used at all. So that means consistent brightness levels, no need for dimming as the APL changes, which is great news. I'll of course test this in full when we get a review sample of the screen later this year. The screen has a wide color gamut with a 98.5% DCI P3 coverage and 100% sRGB quoted. It's also got a 10-bit color depth and can handle 12-bit color processing if you're using the HDMI 2.1 input. Corsair also tell us that it's going to come factory calibrated with a Delta E of less than one to ensure some decent color accuracy out of the box. The display does have a traditional monitor anti-glare panel coating, so that will help avoid uh, nasty reflections and things like that that you get from a glossy panel. Um, but we will, of course, test whether this has an impact on the image quality, the contrast, the HDR experience when we get the screen and we're able to test that in a range of different environments. For ports, we managed to confirm that the screen has got one DisplayPort 1.4, one USB Type-C that supports DisplayPort Alt mode and two HDMI 2.1 ports. We're waiting on confirmation from Corsair on the HDMI 2.1 capabilities, but we expect this is going to be the full bandwidth and relevant VRR support will be available for consoles as well. We'll post up in the comments section below any updates that we get on this. The USB-C port also has 65 watts power delivery and there's also four USB data ports, two on the back of the screen, two on the front of the screen on the stand. All of these ports are actually really easy to get to, being either directly on the back of the stand or on the front for quick access. There's also a headphone connection on the front and the on-screen display control stick. Because all of the ports are integrated into the stand, there's no Visa uh, mounting option available from this screen at the moment. Although of course I do tell us that they've got plans to release a desk clamp for this, which will give you an alternative option to the provided stand. 
The stand only has a tilt adjustment at the moment, which is a little bit of a shame. We did miss height a little bit, although with the screen being so large, uh, it did provide a decent uh, positioning range and we didn't miss height too much, to be honest. What about OLED protection features? Some of this stuff is still being finalized at the moment by Corsair, but the screen is expected to include an autostatic brightness limiter. Now we suggested to Corsair that they make this available for the user to turn off in the menu because you know, that can be really annoying and distracting for office use. So let's hope that that's available via a user option. There is a screen pixel cleaning function that runs when the screen goes into standby or is turned off. Um, but a lot of this is still being finalised at this stage, so we'll be able to confirm more when we receive the screen and we're able to test it. Corsair are going to also give a three years zero burn in, zero dead pixel warranty, which is great news if you're worried about this kind of thing. If I'm honest, I was a bit worried about the bendable nature of this screen before I saw it in action. Um, I thought it might be a bit of a gimmick, but actually when I saw the screen, used the screen, I thought actually it was a really useful and cool feature. The screen has retractable handles at either side which you simply grab and pull towards you to bend the screen. The screen is going to go through some final refinements and tweaks including the handles and the bending mechanism. So I'm going to reserve judgement on the ease of the use of this until the final production sample is, it, is with us for review. But of course I do tell us that the mechanism is designed to support more than 10,000 bending cycles which would last you five and a half years if you change the curve five times a day every day of the week, every day of the year. You can use it in flat mode or in a curve of anywhere up to 800R curvature. So that's actually going to be steeper than Samsung's Odyssey screens that have a 1000R curvature. But with this screen being so large and wide, it's actually much more practical and comfortable than when the curve is crammed into such a small 27 inch or 32 inch monitor. It really doesn't feel too curved. It actually feels a nice comfortable curve on a 45 inch ultra wide screen. The idea is if you're going to use the screen for like office work, general use, uh, applications with a lot of straight lines like Excel and Word, you can use the screen in flat mode, you know, just push the handles back, uh, turn it into a flat mode screen. And then if you want to have a curve for your gaming, whether it's uh, racing sims, first person shooters, you just bend the screen towards you to your liking anywhere up to the 800R curvature. And that will help increase your immersion and your enjoyment of your game. I had a chance to use the screen in both modes and it really gave you, uh, I felt, a lot of flexibility to, to achieve an excellent immersive gaming experience. Speaking of gaming, this is the first 240 hertz OLED monitor that we've had the privilege to test and see and the first that's been released to market so far. The motion clarity was truly excellent as you can see from the pursuit camera photos that we took of the screen. We've compared it here against the LG C2 at 120 hertz and also against the ASUS PG42UQ that runs at 138 hertz. That's actually the limit of an OLED refresh rate in the monitor market at the moment and you can see just how good the motion clarity looked here. The 240Hz gives you a much sharper and clearer image and combined with the near instant pixel response times of the OLED panel, this even surpasses the motion clarity of current 360Hz LCD panels like the ASUS PG259QN. And with the resolution being a little bit more modest than the 4K screen, you might actually even be able to power something like this at 240Hz, which makes it a very attractive option, we think. The screen also supports adapter sync for variable refresh rates from both NVIDIA and AMD systems. Corsair expected to carry both the NVIDIA G-Sync compatible and the AMD FreeSync Premium certification by the time it's launched. They're also promising a super low input lag, but we've not had a chance to test that or measure that as yet. The colours, the contrast ratio, the near instant response times and the high refresh rate make for a really, really nice gaming experience here. We don't know yet whether the screen's going to include a black frame insertion mode. We've asked Corsair this, we suggested that they include it. We'll update you in the comments section below whenever we get any more information on that, so keep an eye below. The Xenion Flex monitor is expected to be released later this year. All that Corsair would say about the price at the moment is that it will be attractive. Uh, we've yet to see what that means, but uh, look out for updates on our main website about that. We're hoping to get a review sample in before the screen's released to market, so we will be able to do a full range of testing all our usual testing and measurements will be included then. If you like this video, please remember to give us a like below, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for future updates, future videos, and keep an eye on our website 
for the review when it is available. We'll see you next time.